Hey, everybody, welcome to yet another very successful. This is just a blessing and an honor to have one of our great instructors, uh, Professor Bernita Archer, uh, who has taken time out of her day to enlighten everyone in the courses, in the classroom, and in the CJ program here at SNU Global. I'm Dr. Jeff Sarnick, Associate Dean here. In a minute, I'm going to go off camera, but before I introduce her and she tells her story, which I want you to listen to carefully, okay, because it'll give you strategies, plans, and ideas as to what to do and how to be like her. So anyway, she had received her master's in public administration with a concentration in criminal justice from Virginia Commonwealth University. She's certified to teach CJ 112 here and CJ 400 crime analysis. And thank you for that. By the way, she's a remarkable teacher. I, she has over a decade of experience in teaching online public administration courses. And that's no easy thing too either. And working in the CJ system. She's worked as a crime analyst too for Richmond Police Department and is a magistrate in Henrico County. And she right now currently is a restitution and recovery team leader with the Virginia Victims Fund. So I'm going off camera and welcome. And thank you, Professor, for taking the time to do this. I'm going off camera and I think you're gonna be in for a real treat here. Yes, thanks, Dr. Z. And that was a great introduction um, and gives you a brief bio of um, who I am. But first, I definitely want to send my thoughts and prayers for those that are um, living or residing in Florida and uh, that hur hurricane that's going through that particular area currently as we speak and also traversing through the eastern shore and eastern coast. I definitely want to make sure that you know that my thoughts and prayers are extended out to you. Um, so as Dr. C said that, yes, I have a real diverse history. Um, I started with a dream. My first dream was to become a lawyer. And as you heard throughout, um, you heard my profile that Dr. C provided, you did not hear that in my summary or in my bio. So that dream is still burning bright in my soul. So I'm gonna give you a background history as to how things really traversed in my life. It was big, um, big actions and events that occurred. So I am a first generation college graduate. Um, my first dream and goal, as I said, was to become an attorney. Um, so where I started at first was Randolph-Macon College. Um, there I transferred to VCU and was a math major. Um, from math, I really found a passion in statistics and was sitting in a class when a young man was sitting beside me with the scale of justice and it was a book with the scale of justice on it. I followed this man to what we call now the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs. He immediately changed my major and became, criminal justice became my major heart and focus and my minor became statistics. And from there was where my passion for criminal justice really bloomed because my thought and heart was to become an attorney, but criminal justice became something that I just really was incited and it, it, it enamored me. Um, so from there, I graduated in 2002. What happened in 2001 changed me as to how I wanted, what I wanted to do with my degree. 2001 was September, during 2001 was September 11th. The uh, tax on the World Trade Center um, kind of ch changed my trajectory. It, I went from wanting to aspire to be an attorney to wanting to do more for the public, for victims, for anyone that was overly affected in those terror attacks and just overall as a victim service individual. So I continued on my journey as a student at VCU and got my master's in public administration because that seemed to be the perfect fit of not only learning more about government, but also if I wanted to further aspire to be an attorney, I could utilize those courses and those credits to transfer over. So my dream continued to be lit, but my fire and my passion became victimology and criminal justice. 
right before I graduated, the school of L. Douglas Wilder um, and government of public affairs, um, L. Douglas Wilder, which is a former governor, first black governor um, in Virginia, was in the building, I think, three to four months before I was graduating. And he told me, he said, Benita, you need to become a governor's fellow. So I became a governor's fellow. I interviewed to become a governor's fellow and I obtained the job. And I became one of really pretty much the only African-American female as a governor's fellow under, under Mark Warner. I worked under Mark Warner as a pub, as a governor, um, Governor Fifth um, fellow for over three months uh, with another individual named LeVar Stoney, who is now a, the mayor of Richmond, the city of Richmond, Virginia. We were two African-Americans as governor fellows in our whole group. And that, I would say, was a, it was, it was a difficult um, journey because it was always the two of us together as minorities in a room and me being the only African-American female. Uh, but throughout that year, I would say half a year, because I was there for about six months um, and a little bit under six months, I think it was about three months, um, we learned a lot about government. I learned a lot about state government. I learned a lot about federal government. Um, also, I learned that we had an attorney general that represented the state. So my eyes became stereo eyed on the state on that particular job, and I applied to become a victim notification advocate at the Virginia Attorney General's office. And there I worked under several governors and several attorney generals. And that particular time that I was working as a victim notification advocate. Um, we were dealing with the notifications and the appeal process to the DC sniper. And that case I worked for over two to three years until um, shortly after I left, that was when his execution occurred. And um, so I became more excited about the criminal investigation and the process of investigating an individual and capturing that particular suspect. And I had the background of mathematics. And from there, I became uh, or interviewed and became a crime analyst. And through all of my journeys, I found that even though I had one goal to become an attorney, I still couldn't deny the fire that was in me um, to jump on these different positions and to assist, still assist victims, but work in investigations, um, also work behind the scenes on the pellet process. So throughout all of those particular jobs, doing up until the crime, uh, crime analyst job, I really was able to find my passion and dig deeper into the criminal justice system. And to further achieve more knowledge of the law, I became a magistrate in Henrico. And there I learned a lot about the criminal um, process, criminal code um, in the state of Virginia. Um, Henrico is the highest issuance of warrants in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So I had a vast amount of experience. Um, also, I did have to deal with um, adversity as being a female, um, a female magistrate and an African-American female magistrate. Um, you, you did have those comments from officers. Um, I did have comments from citizens in their most need. They still had the vision of um, still identifying me as African-American female. Um, but throughout those adversities, and those comments, my professionalism still reigned true. Um, then after I left the magistrate office, I became the re restitution and recovery team leader here at um, Virginia Victims Fund. Um, while working at the Virginia Victims Fund, I do two things. One, I collect restitution 
from individual from defendants in in claims that we have awarded. So if it's only um, it's not every defendant um, that's been convicted in the Commonwealth of Virginia, it's only claims that Virginia Victims Fund has awarded. And then the other part of my job, um, I am facilitating a recovery of sorts for the Commonwealth of Virginia for unclaimed restitution. And as of now, it's only two plea, uh, two individuals, one outside of myself that conduct these particular actions for the United States. Um, right now it's just Florida and Virginia. And my sole job is to locate individuals, take the same skill set that I use from being a crime analyst and finding those individuals and not making them whole, but locate, uh, connecting them with that um, restitution payments that the court has allocated to them and unable to locate them within the statutory limits. Um, and telling my story of my total journey of my career and the adversities I had, I always stayed true to my passion, true to the heart of my goals, meaning I wanted to learn more about criminal justice and I wanted to take every skill that I learned from each job. So the attorney general provided me the background of the appellate system. The Richmond police per, um, per um, job was a crime analyst job. That provided me with the skills on how to investigate crime, how to locate individuals. The magistrate job created that background for me to understand the criminal code and as it's applied in court. All brought together, me being this great professional that handles two separate divisions, that does two separate things, and one that is so unique that it's only two that is done in the nation. And that's why I am. So passionate in saying that one, my dream is still to become that attorney, but my passion and in in answering to that fire and that call within has made me who I am today. And also it has instilled in me the, the qualities and the know-how and the skills and the abilities to pass on to you, those students that assassinate you. So I know about being going through those trials and tribulations. I am a mom too. So I know about those adversities um, that not only that you have to handle at the workplace, but also come home and be a warm and loving mother and supportive. But I also continue to show, um, to show my daughter how to be ambitious, to be compassionate, to have courage, and also to follow your heart and continue to have humor because as things go right or wrong, you continue to rise above that and know that your goal is to continue to plant that good seed so you can reap that good harvest. And only that comes deep within is the talent. And that's where SNHU and I come in, where we continue to cultivate your talent, your skills and abilities. So when these diverse issues come and your conflict come and the day that you have to decide whether you go left or right, you have the skills, you have the know-how, you have the mentors. And that's what I had. I had great mentors. My first mentor that sent me to the fellowship was L. Douglas Wilder. But how that came about is because I was speaking to him in regards to, I just don't know what to do next. The first issue that I came up with was a job location in the stark market. A lot of things happened after September 11th, which backlog a lot of um, dreams that individuals had. So I was dealing with that personal conflict and adversity because I was the first one that graduated with a college degree in my family. So I wanted to not only exceed goals, but surpass that because I was building a foundation for those that came after me, like my sister. Um, and I had those great mentors and I continue to reach out. I continue to talk and I continue to ask and I continue to be 
flexible. Flexibility is very key to your success in the criminal justice field. You're going to be dealing with individuals that are seeing you in their worst time. They are never seeing you in their best time. And you have to be your best in their worst. And the only way you can continue to be that is to, that you find your best ability. And that's your talent, your perseverance, and your ambition and your passion will see you through these worst events. And I have, I went through that because my first warrant as a magistrate that I issued was a murder warrant. This individual had killed his wife. And when he took his right hand up to swear or tell the truth, his, the blood of his wife, was on the window. It was a window pane between me and this particular individual. And what got me through that particular moment was the training, my experience, and my perseverance through very difficult times. My experiences from Richmond PD, my experiences from the notifications of individuals that have lost family members from DC sniper cases or huge cases that the attorney general's office had faced. So everything that I go through, whether it's good or bad, I look back and I say it shaped me. And it shaped me for the moments that I have. So if you do have any issue where, where it comes up, whether it's race, any bias, race, um, your gender, your age, you continue to, one, stay above the fray. Two, continue to remember whatever, if you're going through it, it will take you through it and you will utilize that experience to be better, to be your best. And you do have individuals that you can always come to that will always have your ear, who will always have their ear for you. And that is those at SNHU. And with me, it was not only my mentors, my family. I have a really good foundation with my family. My, my mom, my dad are very, um, they were not college grads, but they were my foundation as to how my dream came true. They, they my dad really, he's a big um, gardener. And he lives by this one thing. You reap what you sow. And I took that to heart. And I continue to plant those seeds throughout everyone and every group that I teach and every person that I reach. Um, in my SNHU class, I continue to ask, even if it's not required in a discussion, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What are your dreams? And we discuss it offline, online, and we talk. I, I try to share as much information as possible because I continue to try to reap what I sell. And the last, I would say the last thing I would definitely um, say was a key to my success was the women that were in my life professionally were my mentors also. So ladies and gentlemen, once you get to your promised land, continue to reach back, continue to mentor, continue to pull up individuals, because that is really the promised land, is that we're not up there by ourselves. And that's what really kept me going through those difficult times, not just educational difficult times, personal difficult times, because it was always someone to lift me up. And that's what I hope to be. Um, after you watch this video, you can always reach out to me. I am a, a great listening ear. It's not too much I haven't heard of by being a magistrate and uh, analyst in Richmond and at the time of the highest crime rate. Um, but if I was to sum my career and my educational um, journey over the last, um, I would say 10 to 15 years, I would give you seven attributes that you need. First, 
you have to be, you have to have perseverance. You have to have ambition. You have to have passion. Fourth, have to have courage. And you have to have a heart. Six, you got to have humor because everything is not going to go as planned. And you got to be, uh, you got to not be lighthearted. You got to have lighthearted about some things because life is not going to go as you plan. And last, you have to have the talent. And that's what SNHU was priding at doing. And that's what I pride in doing is giving you the talent that you need to stick through those difficult and tough times. Normally, I'm not speechless. <laughs> Normally, I'm not. But I'm seeing a number of textbook chapters here or basically a guidebook. I literally mean this, uh, Professor. Um, this what you've shared today is worthy of publication. It really is beyond this video because I've heard so many key assets and elements. But I, I saw a recent commercial with one of my baseball heroes, Derek Jeter, and they asked him, kind of similar to this, you know, what should you, what would you tell a young professional baseball baseball player coming up? He said, be prepared to fail. Be prepared to fail. It's going to happen, but you have to be able to get back up and play another game. So I, I heard passion, humor, grit, heart, courage, flexibility, goal setting, planting good seeds, never giving up. Only This only comes from internally. Mm -hmm. It comes from them. And you pull that out of you over the last 15 years and look where you are today, over and above your education and over above all that, this the, the the business of Professor Archer is 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 a corporation. You've brought all these things together. Beyond the fact you were the first to graduate in your family, the fact that you had women mentors was critical too as well. And this is this is part of that. And I heard talent and perseverance and passion, which we'll see you through your training and experience to rely upon. And your experience is phenomenal. When you said DC sniper cases, I almost fell off my chair. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, maybe some students will remember that or not, but I remember that vividly. That was a tough time, mm -hmm. but good. And here's the thing that I, I took away, and I hope the students will listen really, really well or press rewind if you missed this part. The good and the bad shaped you. You stayed above the fray, and you used that experience to be the best you possibly can be. And that really resonates because so many students don't think that can happen for them. Yeah. But they, you know... <laughs> And you have a great family support system, a great foundation. And the quote from your dad reminds me of what I tell my daughters. You reap what you sow and don't let go of your dreams. And lastly, I was able to try to get the summation down with perseverance, ambition, can't be taught, mm -hmm. passion, courage, heart, humor. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. It keeps the wheels greased. And lastly, talent. Wow. I I mean that, Professor Archer. I hope you're journaling or keeping a diary or something where this can it really would be suitable for distribution at some point beyond this video. Uh, this was one of the most profound profound interviews, or I don't know what to even call it <laughs> that I've yeah, ever I, that I've had the, I've had the opportunity, the luxury, and honor of of listening to and hearing. It is an honor to work with and for someone like you, and I mean that. So you students better listen to her, okay? Yeah. I'm the dean. I'm telling you what to do. I'm just kidding. But no, listen to her repeatedly and model yourself after Professor Archer. With that said, any closing words of wisdom for the students? It's, it's just to continue on your on your journey. Mm -hmm. uh, never give up. Never give up. And when someone tells you to give up, stick back in. Dig deeper. Mm -hmm. and, and that is another quote from my dad. When things are tough and someone tell you to give up, dig deeper. Dig right. deeper. And that's what I've done. And I will be attorney. I will be Esquire. But in the meantime, I'm here to educate those that are SNHU. I'm here to part wisdom. And um, I'm not a boaster. I don't, you know, ex just tell my story. Um, but this was an opportunity for you to hear it strictly from me. 
Um, but if there are any issues, hopes or dreams that you think are bashed and someone tells you you can't, you dig deeper. You continue. You continue your chart and your course. Write it on the wall. Write it on your mirrors. Hey, do what you need to do, but dig deep. And I hope you all heard that. And thank you once again, Professor Bonita Archer, who is one of our wonderful veteran instructors here. In spite of all the other things she's doing, I don't know how she finds time to do all that she does. But thank you for that. And I'm reinvigorated. I can tell you that that was motivation plus. So with that said, this is Dr. C ringing out here from Southern Hampshire University Global in one of our great interviews here today. Women such as Professor Bonita has succeeded and how she become how she's become so successful and an absolute model of success for all of you out there. Thank you again, Professor, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. All right. Bye bye.